everyone, I hope you're all doing super well. In this video I'm going to be doing an oil painting and chill session where I show my process of painting this painting behind me, I don't know if you can see it, which is called The Wishing Well, and I will also be chatting about what I've been doing this week. I wasn't entirely sure what to talk about in this video, so I thought I would discuss my exciting happenings during the week, starting with my quest to find a liner brush. Oh, it's so exciting. In case you don't know what a liner brush is, it's basically the finest detailed brush you can get. Most of the time the ends of them are super long and I have an issue with that because with liner brushes that are like really long and thin, I can't control them. I find that they slip around everywhere. Sometimes you can get ones that are really, really firm, but it's very difficult to know what the liner brush is going to be like unless you actually feel the end of the brush. And I haven't been anywhere. So, so I decided to get online and see if I could, you know, guess, <laughs> which is basically a guess when you're online shopping for brushes, even if you know the brand like really, really well, it is so a lucky dip situation because a brand can make amazing brushes, but at the same time, no matter how prestigious the brand, they can make brushes that aren't very good and they can also make brushes that are just not what you want. And I have had experience where I've bought brushes from amazing brands where I've used their brushes and they've been brilliant and I've bought a different type of brush and it's just either been awful or like the ha all the hairs have fallen out or the paint on them has peeled off. And that's happened quite a few times actually. So I found this brand called Akoya, which do synthetic brushes, and I've had really good reviews. This brush that I found by Akoya was called a synthetic bristle brush, which again was a bit worrying because I don't like bristle brushes at all. They tend to be um, a little bit harder. And so for me, I don't like any kind of hard brushes, but then I don't like them to be too soft either. You see how difficult it is, unless you can feel them, it's very hard to know what you're getting. And so I thought, well, I'm just going to risk it because I had a brush that was like, it was called the finest, finest detail, but it was shaped in the most amazing way. Like it was shaped like a, um, kind of like a filbert, but more of a slight square. So I knew that if I turn it around, I could get the finest detail and I, it wouldn't be like a long liner brush, which I have no control over and just flies around everywhere. At least for me, anyway, I know other artists use them and they seem to have no problems with them but for some reason I just don't know what I'm doing with a liner brush and so anyway it arrived my brush and drum roll so this is it and it's too big I know it's like the saddest story ever I think she was going to cry when I opened the box and I suppose I should have suspected it I had it read the description properly I do feel like I did read the description properly and I did just have a dream that it would be the right size even though in the back of my mind I thought it's probably going to be this size. So anyway, uh, this is such a beautiful brush, just out of like curiosity, if you're interested in checking out this brand, the name is Akoya Synthetic. They have amazing reviews and the number is zero, but it is not the smallest brush ever. It's still kind of like, I have so many of these brushes, so I was just so disappointed, but it is beautiful and I am going to use it. I would say it's just as good as the Pro Art ones and the Pro Art are like my absolute favorites. And so it's definitely amazing and it's got an amazingly long um, handle, which I really like because you can go like so far back with them like this <laughs> and that's really fun. Like I used to really worry about brushes like this because I thought, how can you get the control? And I thought I'd sort of be holding them there. But actually the further back I hold them, I find that, you know, it sort of like feels like a magic wand, you know, and, <laughs> and you actually have a lot of control, believe it or not, in terms of precision and things. And I'm not the kind of person who would, um, who, you know, finds it easy to use brushes in general. And then I did a lot of priming of various panels and canvases and things. And it actually made me realise that I've discovered two of the most boring things that I found uh, when like in terms of art. One is choosing brushes. I find it incredibly, ridiculously boring. Like I, I love choosing surfaces, trying to find the right surface, trying to find mediums, paints, anything like that. So fun for me. But finding brushes is, for me personally, one of the most boring things ever. <laughs> and then the second thing that can be tedious is priming. I think if I was to set aside some time and just relax and do it, then I would enjoy priming. But I think quite often what happens is I prime when I'm really in a rush to start painting and I will quickly get up the canvases and then quickly prime them. And then 
it just like there's no fun in doing that because just sitting there waiting well I don't really sit there and watch the primer dry but I, like, I just keep coming back and checking it and sometimes I start stepping on the primer and it isn't dried properly like the previous layer and then it all mucks up and so yeah I find that those types of things in art I know art seems so exciting from the outside point of view but actually there's a lot of really dull things I mean those are only and uh, I thought I would talk about hate comments because I've been seeing on YouTube land that some other YouTubers have been getting a lot of hate around this time which I honestly feel is so sad I mean I don't think it's something that occurs a lot uh, and I don't think it and it's funny because the people who were talking about getting hate comments were literally like YouTubers that I can't even imagine anyone would send them dislikes or hate or anything like that they were people who had really um, you know nice channels and they didn't have drama or anything like that so in terms of hate comments I wouldn't say that I get a ton probably because I really hope that now I don't suddenly get loads but probably because my channel is not that edgy like I don't really say super controversial things about art I for ages really wanted to make videos about conceptual art and things I don't like about the like modern art world because uh, it's something that I feel really passionately about but I have to say that because of the you know anticipated hate that I would get on those types of videos I actually it's put me off from making them uh, and I don't know whether I'll ever do it in the future but I do kind of feel like I want to talk about such art in some way or another and if it does invite some hate then I guess I would have to brace myself for that um, but like there are some of my videos in terms of like, the oil painting videos and the processes and things I don't really get very much hate because I'm just talking about painting it it's not particularly controversial but I do you get more kind of rude comments on like if I do a video about a review for example like if I review um, mediums or any kind of art products or paintbrushes or whatever uh, sometimes I do get the odd you know like oh you're not supposed to use a product that way or someone in the car <laughs> there's always someone and uh, there's always like more than one person actually but I don't really it doesn't really like bother me that much I just think it's it's always a bit funny when you see it and you're like oh okay you don't mind that too much though because they are entitled to that opinion the only time that I do actually block someone is when they sort of hate on me for no reason whatsoever like I think it's okay if they disagree with my opinion because they absolutely have that right and it's interesting as well to have a different viewpoint I don't expect people to always agree with me quite frequently people don't agree with me so that's fair enough the only time when I do actually block people is when and this only rarely happens but it's when they don't actually give a reason for disliking my videos and then they just continue to kind of lurk around with their rudeness <laughs> like those types of people I don't really understand because they obviously have nothing better to do and they just want to you know be negative and maybe they're having a really bad day or bad like it must be a bad month or something because some people hang around for ages and they just look at my videos and they don't like them and then they just express themselves in a negative way and uh, those types of things I just don't have time for why they don't have anything better to do I guess it will be a mystery that will forever be unsolved now on that note we shall go on to the speed paint and uh, I thank you so much for watching this far this has taken me three times to film because my battery keeps running out of my phone and my ring light keeps breaking I started this painting with just a rough sketch. I tried to be a little bit more detailed with the sketch in terms of the little rabbit's face and I didn't use any reference photos for this painting because I just had this idea of this little bunny that has its ears back and it's carrying a rucksack with carrots in and that was literally my idea to start with and so I just sketched out that from my head and I just put some sort of shading behind the rabbit's head so I wasn't exactly sure how detailed I was going to make it and as you can see the face doesn't have a ton of fur detail or anything like that I just wanted to keep it quite cute looking and the story behind this painting was that this a bunny rabbit travels for miles and miles to reach this wishing well because it really wants to make a very important wish and it hears that this wishing well is so um like magical that it makes your wishes come true and so many of its uh, 
bunny friends have uh, had wishes that have come true from it and the actual wish that it makes funnily enough I mean it sounds like it's going to be super momentous but it isn't really because when the rabbit returns to where it lives all its friends ask well what did you wish for and actually it asks for more carrots <laughs> that is literally the only wish and the wishing well I didn't use the reference for either in my head, I had this idea of a well that had lots of foliage and moss growing over it. And the entire woodland was all really overgrown and out of shape. And I really wanted an aged look to the well. And I think it kind of turned out all right. I mean, I really wanted it also to look enchanted. And so it was just this image that I had in my mind. It's quite funny because I don't often see wishing wells or wells in general. So it was a little bit of a risk, but I do hope you like it. And here is the finished painting. I do hope you like it. I added some little pink flowers and blue flowers. In fact, these types of flowers are in my garden at the moment. So I didn't have to think very much to conjure them up. And also some little blue butterflies that I dreamed up too. So I do hope you like this painting. And thank you so much for watching this little time lapse. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week of keeping you really safe and well. And I will see you soon. Take care, guys.